Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this live stream for WP Tuts. If everybody that's in the chat at the moment could just let me know if you can see me and hear me and everything sounds and looks okay to you, that would be fantastic. And once we've done that, we'll do a couple of uh, hellos to everybody that's in so far. Thank you very much, John. Good to know. Anybody else? Everyone else hearing and seeing me all okay? Let me know. And just want to sort of ask, is everybody having a good week so far? Looking and sounding good, looks good. Thank you very much, everybody. Now, first and most importantly, um, I do have something for a dry throat. And after the last time we talked about IPAs, this is my IPA of choice tonight. So hopefully if it's an applicable time wherever you are in the world at the moment, you've got yourself a drink, whether it's a cold drink, a hot drink, doesn't really matter. But let's sit back, let's get involved, let's have a chat, and let's just talk all things nerd and WordPress. Okay, so before we go any further, let's just say hello to a few people that's in the chat while I have a drink as well. Okay, so who do we have? Steve Pro, good evening, sir. Good to see you here. Rob from Humber Web Design, good evening, and good to see you here as well. John Hellyar, good evening, good day. I don't know where everybody is, so let me know where you are so I can see whether, you know, where we are time zone wise. One Solution HQ, good evening. Charlie Bird, Patrick Killian, good to see you all. Elstec, good to see you here. Michael Wright, yes, Hazy Jane. It's a, it's a nice IPA um, from New England IPA. It's quite nice. It's not bad at all. It goes down very easily. So things might go a little bit wobbly by the midpoint of tonight's um, live stream. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> yes, Steve, it would help you turn your speakers on. But thank God, thank God you weren't the first person to say that this thing's wrong. Pedro from Puerto Rico, Rico even. See, it's going wrong already. I mean, literally just had a couple of sips. Good evening. Um, Abdul, I'm not going to say that surname because I will get it wrong. I'm good, thank you very much. And good to see some people in from the UK as well and from Germany, uh, Denver, India, Gloucester, UK. Well, Steve, you're not that far from me, so uh, maybe there's a meetup in the future. Swap some T-shirts and things. Um, right, what do we have? We'll get on to questions and things in a little bit. Let's just wait for a few more people to come in. Brazil, we are far and wide. Dubai, Germany. I love the fact, UK, Lincolnshire. I do love the fact that we've got a great little community growing here on these sort of bi-weekly uh, live streams and also on the Facebook group and the chat in the actual... Um, videos themselves. So I really do appreciate the time that you take to join me on these live streams to get involved with the Facebook group, which is a fantastic place and growing really, really strong. And also, like I say, just with the comments, the questions, all the different things. So I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to get involved. So thank you very much for everybody. Okay, so let's have a couple more. So what do we, what do we um, Canada, sunny Greece. Okay, do we have sound back now? Let me know if sound is back, okay? I'll pop that on there. Thank you very much. It's the beer's fault. It is the beer's fault. 
Uh, no, for some reason, my audio interface has decided it just wants to stop working. So I don't know if I've just got a really cheap connection or what. But we're okay. We'll stick with this for now. We'll keep on going with this. This is fine. This is why I always have a backup in place. So hopefully now the battery will last long enough not to be a problem. But anyway, so where were we? I need a microphone. I know I do. I do. Uh, let's have a little look. Let's go back up before we had lost sound so I can catch up what everybody says. Um, okay. Hi, Paul. I want to ask which plugin you use for your recent video direct checkout to show free shipping notifications on checkout and cart page. Um, good question. There'll be a video coming out on it very soon. I think it's something like table shipping rates for WooCommerce, something like that. Do a search for that on there or drop me a message on the Facebook group or something and I'll take a look for you. It's a free plugin anyway and it's something that I know a lot of people ask about how to get shipping and have more shipping options when it comes to WooCommerce. So that's one of the ones I'm looking at as part of this WooCommerce sort of series of videos all to do with free plugins that I think are really useful and are great to have in your back pocket when you need them, like a second microphone when things go wrong. Anyway, okay, let's just do a couple more hellos and then we'll get started with what I want to cover first of all tonight. Okay, so what do we have? I'm back, I'm back, I am indeed back, just like ACDC, I'm back in black. Okay, talk on OTP-based registration WordPress with Firebase. I have no idea what that even means. So I do apologize. First time joining you live from New York. Fabdel, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to join us from New York. It's fantastic to have some of our US brethren joining in in UK time zones. So thank you. Speaking of that, what is the time in the US at the moment? I'm assuming, are we seven hours in front? So that would take you to something about, what, 11 a.m. this morning, somewhere around there? Nice T-shirt. Thank you very much, Paul Whittle. That's very kind of you. Paul K, formerly known as Paul C, is in the house as well. 107. Okay. So, lunchtime-ish then. Patrick Killian, 12 p.m. Okay, cool. Right. Sorry, Paul, I had to say it. Bill the World, how are you, sir? I'm very, very good. Thank you very much. And how are you today? Hopefully, you're very well, too. 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Okay. So, we have a few different time zones and things going on here. Okay. So, I want to do, first of all, is just talk about something that I'm going to be covering in the next week or so. And I know a few people have asked me about this, and it's all to do with, with the jet engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go over. No. Oh. Okay, we're back. It's the night of troubleshooting, I think. So what I'm going to do is I want to go over to what the first thing I want to cover today, which is Jet Engine 2.5 and what is new. Now, there are a couple of updates with Jet Engine 2.5, but the one that I kind of want to focus on more that I'll be covering, I've got a video coming out via Crocoblock probably in the next week or so, and I'll be putting some content on myself, is the new custom content type, which if you are not familiar with this option, this new feature, there's a couple of things you may want to know about it. Like, first of all, what exactly are they? Well, the easiest way to sort of say it is if you imagine you've got your typical custom post type, you've got your typical meta fields, all that data, all that information is stored inside the default WordPress database. And the problem with it is, is that you've got for every single entry you have, so say, for example, you have a custom post for every single custom post, you can have up to 10 different entries inside the database, which means that when you've got a 1,000 posts, that suddenly becomes a huge amount of data. Problem with that is it slows your site down. It also means that when you want to search and filter, the search and filters become a lot more resource intensive. They become slower. All those things are why WordPress is not necessarily or has not necessarily been the best for big, big sites unless you've got a budget to scale uh, a VPS server or something like that. With Jet Engine releasing the custom content type, or CCTs as I'll call it from now on, when you use those, you create your own database table. So you have a custom table with your data stored inside it. Now, that data is for every single, should we say, we'll, go, we'll call it a post, but for every single post you create, that only has one line of data inside it now. So if you have 10,000 posts, you only have 10,000 lines of data, 10,000 lines inside that database table, which means filtering and searching and all those kinds of things and sorting all that kind of stuff 
becomes a lot quicker and a lot easier to do. So there are some limitations, and I'll go over the limitations in a moment, but has anybody tried out these CCTs yet? Have you installed, have you tested out Jet Engine 2.5? I know a new update came out today, which I haven't actually had the chance to update to and test out because I think they did that when I've been sort of setting everything up inside uh, for the live stream and everything. So I will be taking a look at that and will include anything that I think is relevant in the video that I put together on my own channel, on the WP Touch channel, not on the Crocker Block one because that's already done, recorded and ready for them to edit and do what they want with. So has anybody tried this out? Does this sound like an option you think actually would be useful for you? I'm going to go over some of the limitations that you currently have using them because they are still, this is still version one of this feature, which means that it's still fairly limited. And if anybody knows me from previous conversations that I've had and previous experience I've had when it comes to the Crocoblock suite of plugins, is their first version is usually a very bare bones version. And then as they roll out more updates to it, more interim updates, you know, the 2.5, 1, 2, 3, and so on, then they start to add a lot more features in, which means that you get a much more feature-rich product. So I'm hoping that when we get to something like 2.5, maybe 2.6, let's say 2.55, 2.6, something like that, that the features will start to make this even more useful than just where it is at the moment with its quite a lot of limitations on it, like I say, which I will go into in a little bit. But has anybody tried it out has anybody have any thoughts on it? Have you seen what it does? Have you kind of held back trying it out? Let me know in the chat because I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Because like I say, this is a two-way conversation. This is us getting together and having a chat about Jet Engine, about different things like that. So I'm going to hop back into the chat and I'm going to see what people are saying about this. So let me know if you've had, you've had a chance to try it or if this is something you're looking forward to trying. Okay. What do we have? Now, I've got to check that I'm actually up to speed. Okay. Uh, where are we? Can we complete guide to e-commerce shipping and payment gateways? Uh, that's a different question. But to answer your, your, your comment, I will be doing some more content on shipping and on things like that. So there will be stuff like that going on, as well as I have a tutorial that's in the development phase that's going to do every stage of WooCommerce and also another tutorial that's in the planning stages, which is building an entire WooCommerce store from scratch using Elemental Pro. So building all the different template files and all those kinds of things. But that's for later. We'll chat about things like that later on. Okay, so your voice is not hearing. Can you, I'm assuming that my voice is back now. I'm hoping that everybody's back and can hear me okay. Um, okay. Thanks for doing the Croco Touch poll. I personally think the owner a bit pants. You're not the only person to say that kind of thing, and I think that's part of the reason why they asked me to create content for them. I don't think it's much that they're pants. I think it's just the problem is there's a lot lost in translation because they're not native English speakers. I mean, if you've ever seen the live streams, you'll know that there is a certain level of language barrier. Um, so you can't really sort of blame them for that side of things. And also, there's you're dealing with technical people trying to explain technical issues or technical solutions, technical sort of products, and they're not always the best people to be educating on those kinds of technical situations, those technical things, you know what I mean? So I can understand why it's not their forte. They're much better at creating the product than they are necessarily educating about the product. But, you know, thankfully, you know, the videos I put together have had pretty decent results and, you know, good feedback on it. So thank you very much for the comment, and hopefully it's... Um, it's something that will keep on going moving forward. I'll be working with that for a long time, hopefully. Okay, um, what have we got? I made a test, and it can tell from the very, very first test that it's fast. Yanis, yeah, I think that's the thing. Is the nice thing is even this is version one, it is working with Jet Smart Filters and Jet Search, which means that you can benefit from using those two plugins to get you know fully featured sort of set of data that you can search and you can filter. It's just how you structure the data is not as comprehensive as you'd have with meta fields and custom post types at this point in time. So fingers crossed that will change and it will get better. Uh, haven't tried it, but definitely will try. Abdul, I would say give it a try. If, I would say it's not the most straightforward to start off with. You kind of need to understand how various parts will work. And when 
The reason my video hasn't come out yet is because I was waiting for their live stream that went through it in a little bit more detail. I've had some more questions since then, and I needed to get some clarification on how various features worked before I put a video together because the last thing I wanted to do was to create content and do something wrong because I didn't understand it properly. So I've created their video that's had approval. I'm going to create my video, which will have a different sort of slant on it. So I think I've got an understanding of how it works now and some of the limitations that we have. I better understand than I did to start off with, at least. So, yeah, it's it's worth taking a look at if you haven't already, but it might be worthwhile waiting for some instructional information to come out to make working with it easier to get a better understanding of how it all goes together. Uh, okay, Rob from Humber Web Design. I've held back, waiting to see what you have to say about it. Well, that's very nice of you. Um, I would say... And uh, I will be honest, I think it's very, very short on features right now, because like I just said, it is version 1.0 of this feature. We need to let it mature a little bit. But if you've got a use case for it, then I think it's a great little extension. It's a great add-on. And I think Jet Engine as a package is, since the last sort of, since 2.3, I think, came out, the sort of last three revisions, they really, really upped the game on what you can do with this. We talked about this in the past. I think Jet Engine, whereas it was the sort of the poor relation to tools like ACF and Toolset and things like that, I think it's definitely leveled up big time over the last six to eight months. The last couple of iterations they've brought out, the major revisions, have had some really nice features in there. And like I said, when they brought those features out, they've then streamlined them over different versions to make them even better, adding little tweaks in there, listening to community and user feedback enhancing it and that's what i like to see it doesn't matter whether it's a one-man band or there's a thousand people involved in it if you have a community of people and you're getting feedback good and bad take that on board and develop your product listening to what people actually want not necessarily listening to what you think people want because they're totally different things i'm sure we, we've all seen that many times with different products that they go in a direction you think well do people really want to go that direction or would they really want that? And they've kind of gone that way, whereas the customers wanted to go that way. So, you know, I think it's a good start. And I like the way they work. I like the fact that they listen to their community, which for me is something that I think is incredibly invaluable. Okay, so what do you say? I'd love to see you doing a tech in regards to creating static sites from WordPress. Have you got anything in the pipeline in a non WooCommerce site? Seems to way drastically improve speed. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Paul, uh, I do want to do a couple of different things. I want to do a new series, which is basically moving away from WordPress as the main thing, because I think there's lots of other options out there. And WordPress has its purposes. And we, Again, we've talked about this on, on previous live streams. WordPress has its place, but people do, when you become accustomed to working with, with WordPress, try to do everything in WordPress. And sometimes it's not the right solution. So... I want to do something that's like basically like beyond WordPress and create content in that. And also, I mean, Gutenberg and Gutenberg Blocks is becoming more and more popular. And while I don't particularly like it that much, I can see the benefits of using it in certain circumstances. So, yes, there probably will be some content on that side of things moving forward because a lot of people are really concerned with the speed in which their site loads and operates for very good reason. So part of the reason why we've taken a look on the channel at you know, sort of CDNs and dealing with sort of optimization tools and things like that. So these are all things that I'm taking on board. They're all different things that I'm kind of listening to what people are saying, what people want, and trying to create content that answers those questions. So to say, yes, it probably will be a case that I will look into those kinds of things in the future. Uh, okay, what do we say? What else have we got? Right in the head around Croco, they are a very interesting road, but benefit a lot from using... Yeah, you for the tutorials. Thank you very much, Joy. That's very nice of you to say. Um, look, I, I, I can't take credit. At the end of the day, they create a product, and I just tried to, to demonstrate how to use it. So I'm glad they paired up with me because they are genuinely nice people. All the dealers I've had prior to working with them and during working with them, they've always been there to answer my questions, to be supportive, to throw ideas back and forth. So I, I can't criticize them in the slightest. They've been great with me, and that's all I can kind of say. Okay. So the next thing I want to take a look at, let me just go over to my next slide. So I already kind of covered that. Let's take a look. So custom content types, what are they used for? 
this is kind of where I'm going to go back to that current sort of limitation that they have. You can't do things like create taxonomies and associate taxonomies with a custom content type. There's no way of creating those taxonomies and tags and so on. If you want to filter or set up sort of um, select lists and things like that. So, for example, let's just say you were creating a client list and part of that client list is you wanted to be able to easily select from the company that they work for. You'd have to create that as a select field. You can't currently create that as a taxonomy and associate that with your custom content type. That's one of the limitations that you have with it right now. Whether they'll be able to work around that in the future, I don't know. I'm hoping they will because I think when they, if they can do that, that will take custom content type to another level because then you suddenly start to look at replacing, you know, the requirement for the WordPress database. So Jet Engine, if it moved over to CCTs instead of the way it currently works, <coughs> would make it incredibly powerful. So I would love to see that in the future. And I'm hoping that is the way it's going to go. But like I say, right now, I have no indication of whether that's possible, viable, or if they'll go down that route. But the kinds of things you could use it for, if you just consider simple lists that don't need to necessarily be categorized by taxonomies or tags, then that's going to be perfect. So let's just take that example of a client list. Your client list could just have simple information like their name, company, profile image, contact details, those kinds of things. And then you could create a select list that will group things together. What you lose then is the ability to have that list dynamically updated. It has to be done via the dashboard of WordPress by an admin or whatever. So there's an, a little downside there. But this is why I say it's more geared towards more sort of simplified listings than it is towards more comprehensive and complex data structures like, for example, you know, like a retail, a real estate site or car sales site or something like that, where you still want those traditional abilities to be able to use custom post types and all those kinds of things. But knowing what the limitations are and how you can use it, you can benefit, like I say, from the simplicity, the speed and all those kinds of things. So I think it has its use case. It's just knowing when to use a CCT and when to use a traditional custom post type meta fields and so on. So that's that's kind of the way you have to look at it. And I'll show you a demonstration in a little bit. Once we go through these areas, I'll do a very, very quick demo of how these things work. So you can kind of get a flavor for it. It's not going to be a comprehensive demo. I'm just going to show you how you create them um, and then you know give you an idea of how it all works. And then you can see some of the limitations that are inherent with CCTs as they are. Let's just jump back over now into the live chat and see what you guys are actually saying. So, Dirk, it's good to see you here, my friend. Great to see you as always. Okay, so what do we have? Uh, let's have a little look. Now, there's conversations about conversations about you, so I'm trying to make sure that what I'm reading is actually not a reply to someone else's. I think that would just get really confusing. Um, let's have a little look. Paul, if Elementor gave us the option to enable only the widgets that we want to use on the site store as well as Crocodile Points, do you believe that this would possibly impact performance? Um, Dennis and Carlos, if you've been around um, this live stream for any, any period of time, I think like the last one and the one before, I've talked about how I would love to have seen Elementor being developed in a different fashion to where it it was developed in. I would love to have seen Elementor Core, which had the core functionality that needed to make it work, you know, so your layouts and all those kinds of things. And then they use the API that they use with third-party plugin developers to then plug in all the other things. So, and I keep saying the Lottie animations, but those kinds of things, you know, things that not everybody uses, not everybody needs. Because I think it was never developed that way, I don't imagine they're going to go back and retrospectively change things to work in that way. Sadly, I think the way that it's structured at the moment, especially after seeing the way that version three didn't really go, the launch didn't really go according to plan. And I think a big part of that was because, you know, they had to, they went back in and made DOM changes to the core functionality, core code, made big changes to the underlying software that runs the Elementor plugin. So I would love to have seen them go back and do something like this but I don't imagine they would because I think they're too far down the path now, the way that everything is set up, the way the whole thing works to make a, a, a massive change to just the real fundamental way in which Elemental works. Never say never. 
And I would love to see it done like that because I think that would make a big impact upon improvement in speed because we wouldn't have to load everything in just to make it work, you know. So I don't see it happening, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, hope that answers your question anyway, um, Denison. I hope I'm saying your name right. I do apologize if I, if I, if I haven't. Um, okay, what else do we have? Paul K, have a look at it. Let's, Ooh, I used to use Joomla, but changed to WordPress and Elementor. Joomla. Oof. Never could get on with that. I don't know why. Uh, very true. Don't think Elementor can correct the huge issues. Oxygen is being considered from my end. George C., Oxygen is being considered by a lot of people, I think. And um, I can understand why. I really can. But I don't know. Again, it's one of those things that to jump onto a completely new system which is, even though it's, it's on version three, I think the first two versions were, I don't think they were they were where they wanted to be. So I don't know. I, I can understand why people are jumping ship. I don't know. I, I really don't know what to suggest there. I would say, and I've said this in the last couple of live streams, it's always good to look at the options. It's always good to take a look at what other things are out there, get a foundation in them. And then if you come across a project that would be better using that solution to Elementor and WordPress or WordPress and Divi or, you know, whatever, then use that. You know, as I always say, it's not about the tools you use. It's how you solve the problem for the client, whether that's you, whether it's a friend, you know, a paying client, whatever. It's the solution you provide is the more important thing than the technology that you actually use to provide that solution. So anyway, so we, like I said, we talked about oxygen and things in the last couple of live streams. So I don't want to go over the same thing um, time and time again, it, you know, just so we don't keep rehashing the same old, same old. Uh, any chance to showcase WP, API, and ACF with Vue.js? Uh, I need to take a look at how all that kind of thing works. And like I say, I never say never, but I've got to consider the fact that when I create content, I have to create content that actually gets watched. If I'm creating content for a very, very tiny minority of people, there's a lot of time investment to create content that doesn't really get noticed. Okay, so now for some reason, my cat. I think this is uh, this is definitely going to be one of those days where I have technical issues going forward. So I think I'm just going to drink lots of beer and not worry when the camera cuts out. And as long as the microphone's there, we'll make it into a podcast. How does that sound? Anyway. George C., I have a WP Reset video, had a hacked site, created a staging using WP Staging in a subdirectory. Staging was Nuclear Reset and actually left the more files in WebRoot. So big flaw in the WP Reset, in my opinion. I'm really sad to hear that. It's, it's sad to hear that you didn't have a great experience with WP Reset. At the end of the day, I don't think any tool is going to be infallible. There's always going to be different tools that will work in many situations, and sometimes they don't. So it's, it's a shame to see that being the case. So, But again, it's one of those things. It's worth reaching out to the developers of WP Reset because when I reached out to them, prior to even knowing who I was, they came back and they were very good, very helpful, nice people. Um, Ivan, I think, is one of the coders. I've been in contact with Ivan. Um, so have a, have a chat to them. Like I say, if you had a problem, just shoot them because they, they may not know what the problem is. If you can outline what happened, they may be able to find a solution. And then, you know, if this ever happens again, that solution is already implemented. So I would always say, you know, if, if you come across a situation where something doesn't work in a plug-in theme, whatever, try to reach out to the developers if you can. I found Twitter to be probably the best way of doing it. But reach out to them, tell them the problem, have a private discussion with them and see if they can find out a solution, you know, all those kinds of things, because that that's only the way that people are going to get a product and sort out issues that may arise, is if you tell them about it and tell them what happened. So, you know, let them know you had a problem, George. See if they can come back with a solution and see if, you know, the next time someone has a problem like that, it's already been solved for them. Anyway, uh, Dirk, yes, it is good to see I finally got something to drink, and I have a couple of beers right by there, if the live stream runs longer, like it usually does. So I've got uh, I've got a little stash to the side, should we say. What do I think of Editor X? Uh, I've only played about with it, and we took a look at it, I think, either the last live stream or the stream before that. I think it's got potential to compete with the likes of Webflow, if there's enough of a take-up on it, because I think 
there's such a difference between that and the normal Wix editor, which is really geared at, you know, the crazy simple kind of setup for people that have no technological know-how. And this Editor X is more for people that want to take on the Webflow kind of thing. And I think that's kind of what they're probably going for. They've seen the success of Webflow, and they're thinking they want to tap into some of that success using the Wix name and having the technology that's behind them with Editor X. So I don't think it's a bad thing. I like the way it works. It looks great. I don't know how it works from a – or how good it performs from a speed and optimization point of view might be something I'll take a look at in the future because I do have a, a beta account and then I've tested another play about with it. So it's got interesting things about it. Uh, I'm drinking Punk IPA Paul K. No, I'm drinking Brewdog. Uh, great beer. I had a triple hazy Jane last week, 9.2 cent a can. Like I say, <laughs> I bet you were a little hazy after that. Steve, thank you very much for the super chat. You're an absolute gentleman as always. Okay, so what else do we have? Let's go on to the next thing I want to cover, and then we'll come back and do a couple more questions before I'm too um, squiffy to, to be able to actually do anything. Okay, so let's just jump over to this. So we've kind of covered what the limitations are at the moment. I still think this is, being version one, I think there's a long road ahead for this, and I think if it's developed in the right way, if it's expanded to take on the things that you need to create more custom content types, leveraging the power of custom database tables. That could be something that's really, really useful moving forward. So we talked about the limitations. What do I think is the future for custom content types? Well, I'd like to think that the future is going to be what I'm saying, which is it's going to have more facilities built into it, more tools built into it, so we can start to use it much more like we do when it comes to meta fields and with custom post types and those kinds of things. If it goes down that route, I think it's going to be an invaluable resource. And I think it's really going to take Jet Engine to another level again and take on something that becomes serious competition. And the fact it's working with Gutenberg and Gutenberg blocks and things like that means that that opens up even more possibilities for people that don't necessarily want to use, uh, you know, Elemental. So Gutenberg and how this all works, I need to take a look at that because I'm not a big Gutenberg fan. I'm not a big Gutenberg user, but I still think I need to get my head around it and see how Jet Engine would work with it. So we can take a look at if there's a, a, a viable way forward for people that don't want to rely upon Elemental. And if Elemental goes in a different direction and breaks away from these things, which means that the link between tools like Jet Engine and Elemental gets severed, it would be good to know that you can still carry on using these tools with something like, you know, the Gutenberg blocks and so on. Very much like Toolset has done. You know, they've taken that approach, which I think, uh, you know, is obviously working for them because they've got a great reputation. But that's kind of where we are with the CCTs. Um, I'm going to do the questions a second, and then I'm going to jump over. And I'm just going to show you how we go about setting things up when it comes to CCT so you can kind of get a feel for what, how they work, how you set them up, and the basics of them. So hopefully you'll enjoy that little demonstration. I'll do a screen share so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, but once I've done a couple of uh, couple of answers to the questions, if I can. Uh, would I please suggest a dashboard plugin for online workshops where students can log in and check their scores, feedback, and downloads, et cetera, as well as teachers can have their own dashboard? Thank you. I think they, you're probably going to be talking about an LMS more than anything. You know, If you want to have scores and keep track and all that kind of stuff, you're going to be looking at a learning management system, an LMS. I mean, you've got, if you don't want to spend any money, you've got, was it LearnPress, which isn't too bad. That's not a bad um, solution for free. Um, LearnDash, that's fairly expensive, but has a fantastic, um, a fantastic name. So if you want something that is going to be, you know, have a heritage, have good support, have all those kinds of things, then Learn Dash might be the one to take a look at. But there are lots of different sort of LMS systems available. I'd say LMS is probably the way you're going to want to go to have those facilities. Rob from Humble Web Design, Super Chat, you are an absolute gentleman, and thank you very much for the beer there, but they're nice and cold, so I will be partaking in a few of those. So thank you very much, sir. Charlie Bird, could you please tell me what you would use to set up a hotel book site as I'm trying to do a scuba diving holiday site I'm lost on the way to go. Multiple boat with different boom types. Um, I might be doing a video soon working with a company that's to do with book inside of things. So let me try that out because it's not something that I, I'm really that strong in. 
But once I've actually taken a look at that, it might give me a better idea. And then, like I say, drop a comment. If you're not a member of the Facebook group, a good way when you we have a chat like this and you want to sort of remind me about these questions or have those questions there for myself and for the members to interact with, to give you feedback, head over to wptets.co.uk forward slash Facebook. Join up, leave your question there, and either myself, Els, or one of the many fantastic people that are part of that group will help you out. They're great. So do that, and let's go from there. Okay, so what else do we have? Yanis, Paul, I hear a lot about Gutenberg. I really wonder, apart from being free, why would somebody be using Gutenberg instead of Elementor Pro? Uh, good question. Speed is probably the first and most important thing. How much of a difference it makes? I haven't benchmarked it, so I couldn't tell you for definite. But obviously speed and future-proof. You know, if WordPress decided on a whim, not to say that they would do this, it would be a bit silly move, but if they decided upon a whim that, okay, Gutenberg is now going to be the only way you can deal with any kind of page building technology and all other page builders are kicked out of our system, our ecosystem, you're kind of buggered if you want to carry on working with WordPress. If you've just invested all your time and your effort into you know, Elementor or Divi or any of those kind of page builders and you don't know Gutenberg or you can't quickly learn Gutenberg, you could be then having a big problem. Obviously, old sites may not work any longer when you update them. There's lots of reasons you know, whether you like Gutenberg or not, unfortunately, it is here to stay. You know, we've got to kind of come to terms with the fact that it is part of this ecosystem and we have no choice in the matter. When they start to bring out phase, I think there's four phases, I think there are. You know, they've done the first phase, which is the blocks. They're doing like headers and footers. I understand templating systems and some other things. So it is going to be something that becomes, in WordPress, the de facto way of building sites those kinds of things. Um, yeah, Whether you like it or not, I don't know. I think it's a very personal view. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I'm kind of leaning towards the just don't like it camp. Charlie Bird, thank you very much for your super chat. Again, you're absolutely fantastic. Thank you for your support. Uh, Javier Gouli. I, hope, I really hope I say that right. How are you? I'm fantastic. Would it be too much to talk about a tutorial about endpoints? Are we talking about um, WooCommerce endpoints or are we talking about some other kind of endpoints? Tag me into your reply to that so I can see it because it'll come up and highlight you, tag me into it, and I'll, I'll let you know then uh, once I know what you're talking about a little bit better. Uh, okay, what else do we have? we will be interesting to see a WooCommerce tutorial with shipping alternatives, store that has more than the basic shipping options and take weight into consideration for different countries. Matt Brook. Keep an eye out on the channel for next week because there's a video that will be coming that will probably be covering all of those topics you just asked for. And the nice thing is the plugin I'll be using is completely free. So check that out. You know, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel to be notified when the new video comes out. And then take a look at that because I think you'll enjoy it. Okay. What else do we have? We'll take one more and then I'm going to jump over. I'm going to show you a little bit about how the jet engine CCTs actually work. So let's have one more. Uh, Charlie Burt, I dropped a message on Facebook. Good man, thank you very much for doing that. Um, okay, what else do we have? How about making a tutorial, how to make an interactive website made for different kinds of people depending on the selection? Uh, Nin, Nin Jin, let me know in a little bit more detail what you mean by that. Probably the best place because it's difficult for me to sort of answer these really comprehensive questions on something like a live stream. It's better if you put that into the Facebook group. But like I say, wptets.co.uk forward slash Facebook. Join up. Leave your question there. And then if I don't answer it, there's plenty of people that will drop you feedback. It's a fantastic little group. But it gives me reason to go and research tools to see if I can find ways of creating that kind of content moving forward. You know, these are big topics a lot of the time with multifacets, building an entire site that has all these features involved in it. It's not something I could realistically answer on a live stream to any real real depth anyway. So if you drop that in there, then that would be awesome. Okay. Is it possible to change currency in WP Engine? WP Engine? Uh, I don't use WP Engine, so I don't really know. I'm sorry. Okay. So I'm going to have a little drink, and I'm going to jump over onto my dashboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a screen. Now, this is... 
a typical example of what you would potentially see using something like, or using um, CCTs. This is a really simple example, and it's just basically a client list. As you can see, we've got the photograph, we've got the name, we've got the company they work for, and we've got a little bit of a bio. Now, this is a kind of perfect example of how you would use CCTs. So I'm going to jump over to the dashboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over into Jet Engine. And the first thing you need to do is just hop into the Jet Engine settings and make sure the custom content type is selected to activate it, hit save, and then you'll have that function available, as you can see in the bottom corner of the Jet Engine setting. Go into there, and I've got a couple of custom content types already created. And I'll just show you how, when you create one of these, the options you have available and give you a, a sort of a really really sort of top-down overview of how this works without going into huge amounts of detail. Um, I'm going to zoom into my screen a bit because probably this is not the largest for you to see. So hopefully that will be a little better and mean that you can see what I'm doing a bit better. Okay, so this is going to look very, very familiar if you've ever used any sort of jet engine uh, post types, meta boxes, and those kinds of things. First thing you have is the name. So we're just going to call this. We're going to call this books for the sake of it. Your slug is automatically created, and you'll see then that your DB table name is automatically generated. You get this first part, which is predefined. Then it just tags on whatever the name and the slug you've given it. It just tags that to the end of it. So that's the database table that will be created once you add your content type in. Now, the has single page. I'm going to come back to that a little later just to tell you what that does because it's quite a big feature that in, in, when you – Understand it, you'll realize when you want to use it and when you don't need to use it. But it's good to know it's there. Okay, menu icon. Well, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Let's see if we can find a book. There we go. We'll have a book from there. And the menu position, we'll just say that we want that to be in the first separator. Okay, so nothing particularly complicated there. It's all pretty self-explanatory. And I'm sure if you've used Jet Engine, ACF, or any tool like that, these are all things that you're used to. Your fields. So this is where we will do exactly that. We'll create our fields, or not for some strange reason. Oh, there we go. I've just added a pile of fields. Ignore me. It's definitely one of those days. Let's just get rid of these extra ones. Delete that. Yep. Delete that. Yep. And delete that. Yep. Okay, let's try that again. So a new field. So when we add a new field in, you're going to have all the things you'd have normally. It's your typical meta fields. So we'll just call this author. You can see it'll automatically fill out the name, meta field type, all the same options are there. So we'll just leave that set to text. That's perfectly fine. Description, if you want to put a description in there so people know what this particular field is for, you can do that. You know, I don't think I didn't need to go through all these things. I think you're, you're going to be fairly well versed with these. Is it required? Yes, we want to make that required. And conditional logic. If you want to apply conditional logic, you can do it. There's various different uh, ways you can apply conditional logic. I'm not going to go into that because I think, again, this is something that these are working in exactly the same way as jet engines, meta fields do. So there's nothing new there. We add a new field in. And we'll scroll down and we'll just add into this one. So we're going to call this book title. And again, text, everything's fine inside there. We'll leave all those values as they are. Set required. And we'll just do one more. And we'll just set this to be something like book cover. Okay. This time we're going to change that to be a media field. Bear with me because I'm using a trackpad and I hate using trackpads. They're awful. The final, final one we want to do inside there is going to be something like description. And we're going to set that to be WYSIWYG so you can style that and get a little bit more creative. Get off. Okay. Everything is set up inside there. Now, you'll notice once you create these fields, you also then get automatically created admin columns that match exactly the same thing. So description, book cover, book title, and author. You can set these to be displayed in the admin section. So when you're creating, uh, when you're adding content in there, you normally start off with just the name and you may have the date it was created. This just allows you to add in more information. So we can say we want to drop in the author. 
You can make it sortable if you want to. If it's a numeric field, you just trigger that to say it's numeric, and that's that's it done. Book title, we're not going to make that. We're going to put that on there, but we're not going to make it sortable. Book cover is going to be the image, so we want to say yes, we want that inside there. And the description, well, obviously you wouldn't want to put the entire book description in there. So that's how we create our CCT. So no real difference to what you've seen creating Metafields, really. You know, it's very, very similar. And now you'll see we have books as a new section. If we click to open that up, we'll go in and you can see there's our different sections. And we've got author, book title, book cover, and actions. So if you go in now, and you can add any item you want inside there. So we've got a custom looking layout, all the different features, all the different fields we wanted are all set up inside there. If I come back out though, you'll see we've got export items, a CSV. So this is really useful. If we open that up, you'll see we can do a couple of things. We can choose the status, or we can choose between any published and draft. You can also punch in the order that you want to use. So if you wanted to output this information in a specific order, you could do just that. So you can see all of your fields, including some of those fields that are automatically created, like the creation date, modified date, and so on, they're all orderable. And you can then set them to ascending or descending, and you can also go through auto integer floating point timestamps and so on. So depending upon the type of content, if it's not auto isn't going to get it right, you know exactly where it is, you can drop that in there to choose. And then you can sort of stack these on top of each other, so you can add a second, a third, a fourth, and so on. Let's just get rid of those. You can also query these as well. So again, all those same fields are available to you. So you can choose author, for example, is equal to, and then you can drop in the name of the author that you want. And again, you've got the type at the end as well. So you can make sure you're searching or querying against the right data type. And again, you can stack these on top of each other. So once you've done that, set up your order, your status, and your query, you can output that as a CSV file, transfer that in, and import it to another site if you want to. So for me, this is great. This is already all built in straight into the CCTs itself. So I really like the fact that that's there. Okay, so that's how you create them. Now, once you've created them, if you want to output these, you need to do the usual thing when it comes to Jet Engine, and that's create a listing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example of ones I've already set up and created. So if I go into, for example, clients, you can see there's the three clients I just showed you on the front end the demo. And as you can see, client name, company, you know, all those say client image and so on. So if we open one of these up and edit it, you'll see it's laid out exactly as I showed you. We've got a company, which is a select field, which is automatically punched in there. You know, all these things, nothing too comprehensive inside there. Then you've got to go into Jet Engine, create your listing. And I'm sure you're all used to working with the loops, the custom loops and so on, you know, listings, whatever you want to call them, it's all the same thing. If we edit that with Elementor, you'll see this is just going to give us that simple layout that we had on the front end, which is this styling, you know, all being pulled in. And then once you've done that, you create a page and you just output that information. So if I just come back out of this and we go back to our pages, oh yeah, let's see, Gutenberg getting in the way as always. We go to our pages. Oh, sorry, I tell like if we go to templates and we go to theme builder, you'll see that we've got, oh, I tell it like, Bear with me, I've got half a dozen dogs barking outside. They're just really distracting me at the moment. Go to all pages. And we've got a client list. And if we edit that with Elementor, we'll see inside there, we've now got, there's our list. So it is just literally just a normal list as part of your normal widgets to do with Jet Engine. So nothing, nothing that's different there. It all works exactly the same way. You pull the data in, in the same way. All that's exactly the same. So once you've set your CCT up, you can still pull all your data in. You can still create your listings. You can create your listing pages. You can output all that data. There's no real difference there whatsoever. The only difference is you pull data in from a slightly different um, content type. That's the only difference. Instead of being jet engine fields, you'll see you have custom content type fields that you can pull your data from there. So it's really straightforward, really, really easy once you've set that up. The only thing that makes this a little di different is if we come over to this test page again, you'll see that I can't actually click on Jane Doe. I can't click on John Doe because there's no extra information available for them. However, I can for Betty Rubble. And let me just show you how that all works. 
I just click and show you, we've just got a detail page. This is just your typical single page. Right, if we go back into the dashboard, when you come into your custom content types, I'm gonna go into my books again. And when you're inside there, if you come down and you select has single page, you can click to open that up. And this gives you three more options. Those three options are related post type. And this just defines what kind of content do you want to associate this with? And the logical thing is going to be posts because it wants to be treated very much like a custom post. So we'll check, select post on there. And then you see we've got title field and content field. What this is asking you to do is effectively map your custom content type title field and content field to a default posts title and content field. So all you need to do is just drop that down there and say your title field is going to be the book title and your content field is going to be your description. That's it. But once you do that and you update your content type, when you add new content in now, so we'll go back to my example of uh, with it, clients. When you create a new client, and we'll do just that now. So we'll just add a new client and we'll just call her Etty Livestream. We'll choose media and we'll just, well, it's gonna be the same woman again, so it doesn't really matter too much. And we're gonna say that she works for Google and she's got a description inside there. Not wrong, but there you go. So everything is done. We just add that. And when we do that, that adds it to the custom content type and also adds it to the default posts. So if we go into all posts, we'll see inside there we now have Betty Livestream. If we open that up, we've got the title and we've got the description because they were mapped to those particular fields. We don't have anything like featured images and so on because that's not applicable to this. But when you do this, you can now create a single post template and output the data from your custom content types onto that page. And I hope that makes sense because it's kind of, this is the thing that really got my head messed up to start off with. I'll be covering this in a lot more clarity in its own dedicated video next week because I know I'm kind of butchering what I'm trying to say here because doing it live is a little bit different to taking my time and structuring it. Um, but what this, like I say, what this allows you to do now is create a listing using the benefit of CCTs, which becomes filterable and searchable, all inside the CCT database. But then it links it through to a custom post that then allows you to have more data or whatever you kind of want to do with it. So you can use the listings, the benefit of the speed you get from that, and you also leverage the power of having its own custom template to display a single post page as well. Hope that makes sense. Uh, you know, let me know in the comment section if that actually makes sense to you, because I probably just butchered the explanation on that completely. Um, yeah, so does that kind of make sense? Does that kind of show you a little bit what it does? You know, let me know, um, and I'll take a little bit of time now and answer a couple of questions. And good to see you, Pascal. Okay. Which font do you use for the content, text, and the listed item? Um, Poppins, I think it is. That's the one I tend to use at the moment. Uh, okay. Do you think Jet Engine could be used to create peer-to-peer -peer donation platform without having to use WooCommerce or another third-party plugin? Uh, pl plug um, I don't know. I'd have to look into how something like that would work to give you a more definitive answer. Uh, I think conditional logic tutorial would be great at some point unless I missed one again. No, Pascal, you haven't. A conditional logic, you're right, that would probably be quite useful. I just need to find a use case that would allow me to demonstrate it, you know, in a, a, a sensible, logical, and cohesive fashion, unlike what I've done in tonight's live stream trying to show you the CCTs. Um, okay. Alan Jacobs, wouldn't it be nice if the rest of Jet Engine worked like the CCT? Auto admin fields and the WYSIWYG field had lots more editing features. Yeah, it would be pretty cool. I, say, I, I, I do like Jet Engine. I've, I've got to be honest, I think it's got a real good future ahead of it, as long as it can keep developing it in the right way. Uh, why do they make templates for the single CCT? I think it's to do with the limitations and the way things are set up right now. I don't know the technical side of things. Um, I think this is the reason they, they, they kind of try to use the technology that's there, the CCTs, 
and leverage the power of what you already have inside WordPress. And when I spoke to Andre, which is the, he's the CEO, he was saying to me that even though you're kind of using CCTs in its own table and you're using meta information in the normal database tables of WordPress, using this method still reduces the amount of entries in the database, so it still increases the speed of searching, filtering, and pulling up data. Like I said, I don't know the technical side of things just yet, and hopefully this is something as they kind of go through it and they expand upon it, we'll find out more about the limitations, find out more about how the way this all works. But from my understanding right now is there's still speed benefits to using this way of doing it. And remember, you only need to use that sort of detailed page if you want to have a dedicated page for that information. Currently, I would say CCTs are more applicable to simpler listings that don't require another page associated with it. So you have a really simple listing setup. There's going to be a million and one different use cases for this. It's just where you don't really require hierarchical information to have a comprehensive structure of linking all the data together. So I would say that's probably the better way of thinking about CCTs right now. Okay, Paul K, have a good evening. Catch you on tomorrow. Thank you very much for stopping by, and we'll see you really soon. Uh, okay, what else do we have? That's helped a lot. Cheers. Rob, I'm glad it's helped. I really am glad it's helped. Like I say, I will be doing a more comprehensive tutorial on this probably next week. I want to get my head around it. I want to find some better use cases for it. I want to try and test it out with Jet Engine and Jet Search so we can take a look at combining all those tools together into a real world scenario so you could kind of get a better understanding of how it would work and when and why you would use it in different circumstances. So keep an eye out. Next week is what I'm aiming to do so it's still fresh in people's minds. So fingers crossed, time permitting, there'll be more content out on that. Uh, okay. Richard Wade, just in time, sir. You are just in time. Just in time for a cold drink. So where is my cold drink today? Okay. Um, one solution, HQ. What about child care? Oh, hang on. What child care centers? What would be the best route for child care ins and outs, child activities with the teachers, administration, hand and documentation, jet engine, plugins, solutions? Again, I think that's 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 a big, big question. And I think you'd be better off posting something like that over on, on the Facebook group. So you know, we can take a look at that, maybe sort of have a look at what solutions would be a good idea. We could have a conversation back and forth. Just unfortunately, the live stream is not a great platform for, for covering something as comprehensive and complex as a topic like that would uh, would need. Okay, Steve Pro, I know you're not a footy fan, Paul, but Wales v England tonight. Ah, well. Yeah. The ball is the wrong shape, and they all run around. They're a little, little bit girly for my liking. Give me rugby any day. Uh, Jamie Sheehan. CCTs are great and better for DB load, but they need something to migrate. I mean, everything in their own table is always going to be faster. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what they're kind of aiming for. They're looking at how do they speed up. You know, one of the biggest criticisms with tools like Jet Engine, with Elementor, on top of a tool like, like um, WordPress, is speed. You know, you are... WordPress was never, ever built to be a content management system. It's built as a blogging platform. It's just because it's an open architecture and people have adopted it and, and expanded what can be done with it and, and pushed it in directions it was never meant to go in. I think much the same as we talked about with Elementor. It was never built from the ground up to do some of these things. So now it's kind of going into that. It's suffering from those limitations. And I think, you know, that's part of the problem we have here and why people are looking at things like Webflow and, you know, even tools like Oxygen, which dumps off things like the themes and stuff like that. You know, there are reasons why people are looking at alternatives. And speed is generally one of the biggest and most important aspects throughout all of these kinds of things. So just always bear that in mind that, you know, these were never meant to do a lot of these different things that they're kind of doing now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, One Solution HQ. Yeah, the Facebook group is the best place to, to drop these. If you've got a question that's really quite comprehensive, please just head over to the Facebook group. And again, I'll say it, and I keep reiterating it, it's just wptuts.co.uk forward slash Facebook. Couldn't think of it then. Uh, sign up, completely free, become part of the community, get involved, ask your questions there because there's a fantastic community of people that have tons of knowledge beyond what I have, and they're great, they help. 
as much as they can. So please do get involved in that. Charlie Bird, rugby all the way. Thank you very much. You're on my wavelength. Okay. What else do we have? Jimmy Sheehan, right now in a normal table, uh, it has to, su to search with absolutely everything else. We have a set with almost 2,000 posts with no method to migrate them into CC table without writing SQL. Yeah, I can't imagine it's going to be the easiest thing. And maybe, you know, again, it's one of those things that hopefully maybe in the future, you know, um, Crocker Block will look at some way of creating uh, an import and export tool to pull data from something like, you know, from ACF or something to put the data into CCTs when it's just kind of being expanded upon to make it a little bit more feature rich than what it currently is. But I think it's got a good future. I think it's interesting. I think it's definitely doing something that a lot of other plugins are not even looking at right now. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Giannis, uh, oh, Juan Gabriel Delgado, Delgado. Hi from Argentina. Good evening to you, or good afternoon, or good morning, or whatever the time is. Thank you very much for popping by. Uh, okay. What do we have? For CCT, you created, when you added the company name, you had to choose one of the three choices. Is there a way to add new data on the fly? Anthony T. No, that's one of the limitations. That's what I'm saying is at the moment, we can't use, we can't leverage the power of things like taxonomies. So we can have a dedicated section on the front end, maybe, that allows you to easily input that data. The way it works at the moment is still has to be done through the back end. Um, that's the only way it can be done at the moment and added into the actual CCT itself. So hopefully this is one of those areas that will grow, will expand, will go beyond where it currently is and take it into, you know, where we want it to be, where it takes over from the current way things are working, where we are reliant upon the database for WordPress itself. Because I think when they said to me before, I don't know if I said this earlier on, for every single entry that goes into the database in WordPress, there's roughly 10 different entries inserted into the database through two different tables, which is insane. Because you think if you've got 10 entries, just for 1,000 posts, that's 10,000 different entries for 1,000 posts that have to be searched and filtered against, as opposed to 1,000. So, you know, the overhead is there. It's crazy, just absolutely crazy. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, what have we got? Giannis, I tend to switch from ACF to Jet Engine. What I found is that you have full videos about ACF, but not a really full video on how to use Jet Engine. Are you planning something like that? There's a deep dive tutorial that will be in the pipeline. Um, the, the, the contract that I kind of had with Crocker Block was six video tutorials, and the sixth one is on CCTs, and one deep dive video. So the deep dive is still yet to be done. I don't know what I'm going to do it on yet. We need to have a discussion about that. And like I say, and hopefully, you know, fingers crossed and touch wood and all those kinds of things, they'll be happy with the way things have gone in the first batch, and they'll want to continue working with me for another batch of six videos and, you know, a rolling kind of thing. <clears throat> you know, hopefully that's the way it'll go. But yes, there will be a deep dive. And I'm still working on some ideas of some more comprehensive tutorials. I want to do a revisit the front end dashboard using Jet Engine. So that is on the card. So I'm hoping to do something like that in the next few weeks because I think it's matured a little bit more now. It's just getting the time to do all these things alongside client work, alongside research, alongside testing plugins and all those kinds of things. So I think, as I've said before, the deep dives tend to take probably a couple of weeks to go through ideation, testing, looking for solutions, bug fi fixing, solving problems, talking to the different software companies if I need something, Bef then sort of building the design, then testing everything out, make sure it all works and does what I want it to do, then dissecting it all to put it into a breakdown of how to do it, and then I've got to create another new site, and then I've got to go through it and record every single step and then go through the editing process and so on. So they are enjoyable to do, but they're also huge uh, investments of time to create them. So please do understand that the deep dives is something that I love doing. I just need to have the time and the inspiration to create content that I think is worth me creating for you. There's no point in me creating something half-assed. You know, it has to be done properly. It has to be tested. It has to be something that I think will add value to people that are looking to expand their skill set and, and learn new technology, new techniques, and so on. So that's 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 the reasoning behind why they take longer than normal video. So jet engine stuff is on the cards and will be coming alongside you know jet search, jet smart filters, and so on, all those kinds of things. So yeah. Okay. Anthony T, thank you for explaining that. No problem at all. I hope it made sense. 
Uh, okay, Paul, what was, what was a plugin mentioned a while ago about cleaning databases? That's a good question. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. I've got it going upstairs. I've got it bookmarked, I think. Uh, let me see if I've got one of the tabs. I don't think I've got it bookmarked down here. I think I've got it upstairs. It's something like uh, dash, Dashboard Cleaner or something like that. It's called Database Cleaner, DB Cleaner, something like that. It's, it's a popular plugin. It's something that just do a search for uh, cleaner and see what that comes back with. I'm sure there'll be something in there. Jamie Sheehan, hello from Vancouver. By the way, rugby all the way. They have paid one hundredth of the sum. Sit on the bench. Arsenal players and more physical. Absolutely. You, you know, I'm not going to go into sports too much because rugby is the only game they enjoy, other than touring cars. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that rugby is is a, a proper physical sport where you don't have people falling over because a ball went past them 10 foot away and they felt a, a breeze of air or maybe, you know, a, a blade of grass touched their ankle and they fall over in absolute agony. We'll say no more. Uh, okay. Yes, I think WP Optimize is another one. Uh, Advanced Database Cleaner Pro, that could be one. There's lots and lots and lots of things uh, that'll do that kind of job. Dirk, how is the course, paid course coming along you were talking about? Uh, a slower than I would like, but... I've got the complete outline for the first module. Um, I've got the script inside of things I've got to finish up. And I'm aiming to try to get that first module recorded and edited and all the complementary material that'll go with it. Um, I'm hoping within the next month and they get the first piece out there, the first, first part out there. And I can kind of gauge interest on it and see where we go from there. So it is on the cards. It's just with lockdown with three to five videos a week with client work, <laughs> everything else. It's just time is, is not something I've got too much of, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, jet engine question. Does it integrate with WooCommerce so I can create a client portal where customers can order services from their dashboard? I don't believe it does at the moment. Um, if you want some kind of integration like that, I would take a look at something along the lines of... Um, ACF Front End Pro, that's got some integration with WooCommerce, but I don't know if it's the integration you were looking for, but I don't believe the Jet Engine has any integration yet with WooCommerce to make it do what you were looking for, unfortunately. Uh, rugby and F1, only two sports I'll wake up at 4 a.m. to watch. 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, I'm using Jet Engine and have created clients that own sites that have site reports attached to them weekly. A bit stuck now to work out how to create a relationship for the logged in users to be attached to the client and therefore only have access to sites, site reports that they are permitted. Um, take a look, if you're using Jet Engine, take a look at the permissions option because there's they released, I think, a Jet Engine 2.4, I think it was. They released all the conditions and things inside there. So maybe take a look at the conditions and see if there's something in the conditions feature that will allow you to, to do what you're looking for. That's what I would suggest, first of all, to see how you can sort of filter it out, to limit it to only the person that's logged in. The other way you can do it is if you take a look at Advanced Queries for Elementor, which is a free plugin, which I used in my custom dashboard and will also be in, in tomorrow's video, which is on creating a custom dashboard with Elementor for free. You need Elementor Pro, so don't, don't shoot me on that one. But all the other plugins are free that will allow you to filter information based upon the currently logged in user and author. So that might be something you want to take a look at. And there's also different relationship things there. So that's um, dynamic, sorry, that's advanced relations. I think it's from advanced relations, advanced conditions for Elemental. Have a look. Again, if you don't, don't find it, just hit me up on the Facebook group, remind me, and I'll give you a link to it. It's, it's, it's a great little, little plugin. Um, okay, what else do we have? Is there a way to migrate all content only, post types, elemental, templates, etc., from a hacked site to a new site with all pre-installed, freshly installed plugins on target site? Uh, no problem, Jumpworks. Um, not that I'm aware of. If you've got a hacked site, it's going to be a difficult one because you don't know what's been hacked. If they've, if they've gone in and done anything to the template files, and got anything to the code in there, you could have yourself a problem. One of the easiest ways to have a site where you've got all your different plugins install into WordPress and all that kind of thing is WP Reset has the option to create sort of lists and then you can just have that and you can just click it and install those, all those things. If you've got paid for plugins, you can put your uh, license code in there 
and it'll automatically install them, license them, register them, do all those kinds of things. That would be a good starting point to at least cut down the process of, you know, setting up WordPress, installing all your plugins, all those kinds of things. Templates, you can dump all the templates out of Elementor as one JSON file, and then you can upload them to your new site as one JSON file, and it'll unpack them into your templates folder as individual templates, so you could do that. Content, that's a difficult one, because again, like I say, it all depends what's been what's been hacked, what's been compromised. Um, you know, there are tools out there that allow you to dump all that out. I think you can just do a normal uh, WordPress export. If you look at the import export tools, you should have the option in there to export and you can choose what date you want to export. And I believe any sort of custom post types, any kind of custom data and all those kinds of things are also selectable. So there are a couple of options to take a look at. But, you know, it's one of those things that it's not an easy thing to rectify after a hack because you don't know what's been compromised. Okay. What do we have? Yeah, that's right. Anthony T, you can export using the native WordPress explore, uh, exporter. Uh, okay. So what else do we have? Okay. So one thing I want to go through finally is because it's 10 past 7, and I know these, these one-hour long live streams always seem to last longer than one hour. And this is no exception. If anybody has seen the video I released probably about eight to 10 months ago now, it's a very, very popular video on the channel, which was about creating a custom front end dashboard for your users to keep them out of the dashboard, the normal WordPress dashboard. <clears throat> that used mostly paid for plugins. So lots of people complain about the cost of different plugins to do different things. And while I'm of this, the, this sort of mindset that if you want the right tools to do the right job properly, sometimes that costs money and you have to invest in those tools to get a good end result and also to get the support moving forward. You know, people are developing things for free. Is there really an incentive to keep developing them if they're making no money out of it? So with that in mind, anyway, I created a video which I just have to finish the editing up, which will go live tomorrow evening which is how to do a very similar thing, but in a more stripped back way. So if you create a site for a client and you just want to give them access to be able to upload their own kind of content to posts, but you don't want them to have access to the dashboard, this could be a great way of doing it. And apart from Elementor Pro, everything else is absolutely free. All great tools, and I show you exactly how to build the entire thing to restricting access to various different sections, to creating logouts, creating all the different pages, creating everything, linking everything up, doing the entire job. So that will be out tomorrow. So I hope this is going to be something that you'll find interesting. And now we get an ice cream van coming around at, at, at 7 o'clock in the evening. So excuse the ice cream van outside, folks. Um, but if anybody wants an ice cream, it does very nice sherbet ice cream. So that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, so hopefully it'll be one of those things that will be interesting. Even if you don't want to create a front-end dashboard, it'll still be something that will show you how these tools work, how you can combine tools, because I think this is one of those things that a lot of people don't necessarily look at, is how you can take different tools, combine them together, and come up with some amazing results. This The dashboard um, video they did originally, I'm blown away. I actually had uh, ben Pines and Verdi over from Elementor asked me could they have the login details to find out how I built the entire thing because they wanted to see how it was done because they loved it. So that's a pretty good endorsement. And I think currently it's sitting around 50,000 views, which is pretty cool for something that's quite as comprehensive as that and also quite as niche as that. You know, lots of people just like to have a plugin that you can just install it and it'll do the job for you. And that's all they, they, they want to do. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that but I like to see how these things work and be able to tinker and do my own kind of thing. So yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy that tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to, to putting that one out there. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now. If anybody's got any questions, let's just take 10 minutes where you can just basically ask me questions and I will do my best to answer them. I'm gonna open up a fresh beer and I will do my best to answer the questions you have. So please do ask away and excuse the can opening. What hacks have you most time cre what what hacks save you the most time creating YouTube tutorials? Um getting quicker at editing and not being so picky. There was one thing that was said well oh, I, I can't remember who said it but they said it quite a while ago and it was one of those things that's always stuck with me. 
because I'm, I'm one of those people, I'm a perfectionist. I don't like things going out that are not the way I want them to be. But there's a comment that was said, and it was better done than perfect. And I've never heard a better analogy for, for creating content on YouTube and things than that, because you can get so bogged down in the most pointless little transition or, you know, something, something that's really not going to make any difference. And never put the tutorial out. You know, it's one of those things. So I've, I kind of go by that mantra, better done than perfect. So one of my biggest hacks is doing that. The other one is a piece of software that I've got from Red Giant. And when you record, because I record my audio and my video separately, I record a scratch track on my camera in front of me. But I then got a dedicated recorder and a shotgun microphone above me, which failed me tonight. Um, so I record that because that gives me better audio. Then what I do is I sync those up in post. And that's fine if you have just two files. But if you have a multiple cameras or you have multiple different streams, then I can just dump all those into this program, hit synchronize, and it'll synchronize all those for me. And then I can output that as an XML file, and I can just open that up directly inside uh, Premiere Pro, pull the XML file in, and it'll pull that in with all of my audio replaced, everything time synced, everything sequenced, and then I can just chop up the bits that I want out of that, and then I can go to the, the color correcting and process and all those kinds of things. So for me, that's probably one of my biggest, biggest um, time savers. I can't think of the name of, um, I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but it's a great, great bit of bit of software. Um, wasn't cheap, but thankfully Red Giant have a sale once a year. So I picked it up, I think, for about 50% off, and it was worth every penny. Okay, what else we have? Um, Jet Engine question. Front-end submission forms using Jet Engine for other custom post types. Is this possible? Do you mean, Anthony, this is in answer to your question. Do you mean, is it possible as in other data, as in putting it into things like ACF? Um, if, it, if that's what you mean, I haven't tried it. But theoretically, it should be possible. I mean, Jet Engine does link up to ACF in a lot of cases but not all cases, and there's some, some things are lost in that translation. So, excuse me, I've never actually tried it, but I don't know. That's, that's the honest answer. If it's something you really want to know about, let me know on the Facebook group, and I'll take a little look at it. I'll run a, a quick test and see if those options are available. Okay. Uh, when is your next chat? Got the notification at 11 a.m. Jamie, my next chat... Do you mean my next live stream? If you're talking about my next live stream, it's two weeks today, which will be, what will that be? That will be, two weeks today will be the 22nd of October at 6 p.m., and that's going to be um, British summer time for now. So it'll be British time anyway, to check out the UK time. Uh, yeah, so it's every two weeks, and it's at 6 p.m. on the Thursday every two weeks. Hope that uh, answers your question. Uh, okay, what have we got? Thank you for your time. Great as usual. Thank you very much for taking the time to join in, Pascal. It's always very much appreciated. Uh, hi, Reza from Indonesia. Good to see you here. Okay, what have we got? Let me just scroll up a little bit because we've got lots of things going on. Jumpworks, investor support plugin creators. Absolutely. Um, Charlie Bird, look forward to watching tomorrow. I hope you'd enjoy it. I hope it's something that will help you out and maybe show you a couple of different plugins because that's another nice thing is even if you don't want to do what I'm doing in the in the tutorial if it just gives you a sort of insight into some new plugins that open up some opportunities that maybe even fill a gap that you'd be looking for or replace a solution that wasn't doing what you wanted to do then the video for me was, was worth creating because it's not always about the exact topic that I'm covering a lot of time it can be more to do with the methods that I use to do something, the tools that I use to do something, the way I combine different things together. I, I love doing that. It opens my my eyes. It gives me creativity to create things that I wouldn't necessarily have thought of. So I would always recommend that if you have different plugins, just look for ways you can use them together because that's where a lot of the fun is. And then when your, your, your next client comes along or in six months, a client comes along and says, could you do this for me? And this just happens to be something you've played with and you go, Actually, yes, I can, and I can do it better than you wanted because I know exactly what needs to be done, and I've already done it. This is something that I know has stood me in good stead over the years is that I've experimented with different things, and then when a client comes out of the blue and says something, and I'm like, hmm, 
I remember doing exactly that with these tools and it worked really, really well. And then you've got the job and you're doing something that you know how to do as opposed to going in blind and thinking, where do I start looking for these tools to create this particular solution to this client's problem? So always have a little experiment. You know, when you see tools out there, try them out, watch the videos, experiment with them, throw them against the wall, see what sticks. That's what I would always say. Okay. Uh, okay, what do we have? Thank you, Paul. I'm a successful online business because of you and WP Touch. Cheers, bro. Well, Rob, that's incredibly nice to hear. I don't say that it's anything to do with me. I think it's more to do with you taking the time to work with clients and building a business. But it's nice to think that you, you, I, I've played any kind of small part in anything that's helping you create a business, make money, and you know, change your direction in life, whatever it is. And that's something that I kind of found really crazy. This is going to go off into a complete tangent. I've had several different emails and messages and comments and things. And I can remember watching a video, I think it was video creators. And one of the things that, that Tim Schmoyer says on there is create videos that, ch that change people's lives. And I always thought, what a very grand thing to say. And, and how are you changing people's lives? You know, Unless you're doing something, you're a psychologist, you're a financial advisor or something, how are you changing people's lives? But then I've had emails off people saying – that through the videos and things that we've put to, I've put together and put out there, that it's given them the confidence, the skills, the ability to go and create a web design business. And now they're running their own business. They're successful. They're making more money than they ever thought of. They've moved to a nicer area. They've moved to a different country. They've changed their family's life. And I'm like, there's, there's a tear in my eye from this kind of thing because I never thought being sat in a, in a, in a, a room in a house creating a video, talking to a camera that probably makes – People looking from the outside thinking, what is that guy doing with a big light on and talking to a something that it would make any difference to people? So I'm really, really over the moon and really humbled by the fact that anything that I've ever put together has helped anybody change anything about their life. So if that is the case, I'm over the moon that, that I've had a tiny part in it, but take no misunderstanding that the reason that you become successful in doing this thing is because the hours, the dedication that you put in, not because of what I put out there. But thank you very much for saying that anyway, Rob. Okay. I'm an inspiration. I would never say that. An inspiration while drinking a beer. Mm. Dirk, I think you underestimate yourself, Paul. Um, I don't think it's underestimate. I think it's just, it's very difficult when you're, you know, People say that you are influencer and you're this, that, and the other, the, the different sort of terminologies around people that create content on something like YouTube. But for people like myself, the reality of it is I'm sat in a room that's an absolute mess, you know, drinking beer, talking to a, a camera screen and interacting with people all around the world, which I absolutely love. It just seems kind of surreal that you would have any kind of impact upon anybody's life doing something like this. I mean, for me, and I think I said this in the last live stream or the one before, this is just passion for me. I just love creating things. You know, I love learning new technology. I love learning new software. I have a real passion for it. So creating the content was never about creating a business around it or any of those kind of things, even though that is kind of what's happening. It was always just about, I found something that I thought was really cool, and I wanted to share it with other people that might find it cool. And that was all it ever was intended to be. So to the fact that we're creating this community, which, you know, is 99% down to you for being part of it, you know, and I'm a tiny, tiny portion of all that. I love it. I think this community is amazing. Like I said, the Facebook group, the, these sort of biweekly uh, live streams, I absolutely love it. I love seeing the same names, new faces. It's just amazing. So I really do, I'm really humbled by you, you guys being part of it. You're part of the journey for me. It's, it's amazing. Anyway, I've rambled way too long. I'm going to drink another sip of beer. I'm going to ask a couple of questions, and then we're going to call it the night. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, Charlie Bird, I've been helping so many people in these crazy times. It is very crazy times, and I think, I think this is the thing. I mean, there was... Um, if you've ever read a book called The Youpreneur, again, I'm useless with names today. The, the author, English author, lived in America, and he's big on, you know, becoming a brand. You know, you are the brand. You become a youpreneur as opposed to an entrepreneur and all those kinds of things. And he posted up the other day saying, 
what's the, the thing you're most thankful for about your business? Or what's the thing you think is the best about your business? And the thing I put up on it was that it was my ability to have the, say, the ability to pivot my business so quickly when this health situation struck. And I think you can never, never underestimate how important it is to have control in your own business. So if you are doing this on a freelance basis or in a small agency, you know, whatever you are, keeping things small and simple can be such a godsend because none of us saw this kind of situation coming, happening to the world, happening to, to businesses and people and individuals and all the, the terrible things that are happening. But if you were in a business which is, you know, like the Titanic, slow as anything to try to maneuver, when things like this happen, you've got such a big chance of sinking. Whereas if you are small and light and you can pivot very quickly, you can react to situations like this and you can look at op for opportunities and you can act on those opportunities. And I think that's r massively important and really underestimated when it comes to, to business. And I have no idea I got into this topic now. I've completely lost my, my train of thought. Anyway, thank you very much for the amazingly kind words. Thank you very much for being part of this journey. And let's say long may it continue when we, we keep building the community, we keep helping and supporting each other. It's amazing. Okay, let's go back and ask a couple of questions and we will then call it a night so we can all go and have a bite to eat, a drink, whatever you need to do on a Thursday afternoon, evening, day, whatever it is. Let me just go back. Lee, I work in an agency. Do you think now is a good time to freelance? Oh, that's a difficult question. I think everybody would have to answer this question themselves. I don't think I could answer it for you. I think freelancing gives you the control. There's positives and negatives to all things. If you work for an agency and they are paying you a retainer fee, then if you're not working, it's not making a massive difference to you. You know what I mean? It's, it's boring, but you're getting paid. As a freelancer, you don't have that luxury. If there's no work, there's no money. The flip side of it is, that when you work for an agency, you're at the whim of what they decide to do, when they decide to do it, and how quickly they decide to do it. You, on the other hand, as a freelancer, if you see an opportunity that's slightly left field from what your main business is, and you think, well, I can do that. I've already done it. You can jump on and do it. You can make money from it. That is where the beauty of freelancing comes into things. You know, never underestimate the ability to be able to pivot to new opportunities when they arise, they might be an opportunity to last for one time. You might have an opportunity to make, let's just say, a thousand pounds, thousand dollars, whatever. And it's a job that takes you however long, and you just think, I can do it. You can take the opportunity, you can make the money, you can move on to the next thing. You can take the next opportunity, you can do all those different things. You can't do that when you work for someone else, and you can't really do that when you're doing an agency. You can obviously sideline, you can do some side hustles if you want to. But I can't say, yes, there's a good time to sit to go freelancing. Tough times out there at the moment, but also with tough times come opportunities. You know, so it all comes down to where you are in the world, what opportunities you think you can tap into and how you could maximize those opportunities. For me, I, I moved into freelancing nearly four years ago. And for me, it was the best thing that I ever did. Even though prior to that, I spent 11 years in my own business as a partner in a business, moving over to become my own, my own freelance boss, control of everything was daunting terrifying but the best thing i ever did because it's absolutely changed my life in the last four years so take that for what it's worth and you know look at your situation look at what you think is, is viable moving forward your skill set the area you live how you could tap into things what opportunities you could take and decide from there but don't just jump into it for the sake of of thinking i want to do freelancing as opposed to being an agency user uh, worker hope that helps anyway okay uh, how have I found a CRM bridge plugin that will take data from native elemental forms of feed to Infusionsoft, for example? No, I don't really use CRMs. I don't really deal with that many clients to have the real need for a CRM. And with the GDPR, it just it's just another headache to deal with and one I just stay away from, if I'm honest. Steve, oh, what have we got? Worth to see what you can with WordPress sites being vulnerable and solutions such as static sites, maybe via fast CJ. I'm assuming that's probably something, that's a different conversation going on, so I'm, I'm lost a little bit there. Okay, what do we have? Steve, you're too modest, Paul. Your passion in your content is for all to see. Thanks for all you do. Thank you very much. It's, glad, I'm, I'm, it's great to hear that. You know, I'm, I'm trying not to keep reinventing 
the wheel that lots of other people are doing. You know, there's times where I've got to do that because I want to create a natural progression of content. But I try to sort of do – Chris Ducker, that's it. I try to do um, – I try to just do different things. I try not to be doing the same as everybody else is doing in in WordPress land. You know, that's my kind of selling point. That's my USP. Sorry. Uh, yes, it was. It's Chris Ducker. That's right. Jump works. You are absolutely right. You preneur by Chris Ducker. A good book. If you haven't read it, if you are someone that is a freelancer, so you know you you sort of you have your own business. You want to have a social media presence. All those kinds of things. Take a look at it. It's actually a really good book. Um, it might give you some ideas in how you can brand and market yourself as opposed to branding and marketing a company. There's a big difference in it, and people's perceptions of company and individuals has changed a lot over the last couple of years. So it's worth taking a look at. I will pick a copy up and have a little look. Okay, what else do we have? We are collapsing. The important thing is to sponsor an animal financially. I have no idea what that's even talking about. So Terraform, Okay. Uh, Yanis, I get asked a lot about the ability to have tokens when using jet forms in order to restrict from form submissions. Are you familiar with something like that? I haven't really used the form side of things of jet, of, well, I can't say jet engine, you know, the jet, yeah, the jet engine. Um, I always found it a little bit clunky. Now, they've, st they've added in some new features to do with copying and duplicating fields to make the whole process a little quicker. So when I go back and take a look at creating the front-end dashboard, part of that will be, obviously, I'll be using the forms and I'll have a better understanding of it. So I haven't, I can't say yes, I have at the moment, but I, I am going back to take another look at that side of things. So hopefully it, that'll give me the opportunity to look into the tokens and some of the things you can do there. So as always, Yanis, drop right by the Facebook group, pop your question in there, because they say, if I can't answer it, there's lots of really good people that have been using these tools probably in more um, use cases than I have and able to give you better feedback than I can but hop on over there and get involved okay what else do you have uh, Lee thanks for the good advice my pleasure Miguel hola from Mexico just open my computer and see you have a live streaming again nice you need to be earlier next time bookmark 6 6 p.m. Thursday the what did I say it was the 24th 6 p.m. British summertime so I don't know what time that would be in Mexico Bookmark that and get involved. Any news about e-editions? Uh, Lillian, the simple fact of the matter is there's, there was there was a, a discrepancy. The reason that got taken down is to do with a disagreement between dynamic content for Elementor and e-add-ons. Because I work with dynamic content for Elementor, I'm staying away from the e-add-on side of things. I'm not in you're not using it or creating content on it or anything else like that. I have no problem with people talking about it on the Facebook group or anything else. Feel free to talk about it as much as you want. Els is quite happy to talk about it and test and help people out and things. But from my point of view, from a professional perspective, I'm staying away from that because I have a, what can I say, I have an obligation to dynamic content for Elemental and the, and the developers and the owners of that company. So I don't want to get involved in any kind of drama or anything to do with that. So that's my answer to that, Lilia. So I hope that, that answers your question. Steve Pro, yes, that's the one, the rise of the youpreneur. Uh, Miguel, noted, good man, good to hear. No problem, Lilia, I hope that helped. Okay, so we'll do two or three more questions. If anybody's got any more questions to me, and ask away, let's just do a, an ask me anything for the next 10 minutes so I can drink a few more beers and I'll answer questions as much as I can at least. And then we can uh, we can call it a night. I keep saying that and I keep drinking beer and keep talking. Okay. So here's a question for you guys. I mean, how many people out there that are left in the chat are freelancers or agency workers or actually web designers by trade making a living out of that right now? Let me know in the chat. And also, let me know, how have you found the last six months with what's gone on in the world, the last six to eight months? Have you found you've had positives out of it? Have you found it took a massive impact upon your business? Let me know, because this is something that I think I'd love to know about what you guys do, what impacts you've had from it. Have you found opportunities that you didn't see, that you've taken on board? Have you found that your business just went flatline overnight? Let me know. Okay. Do you have more Crocoblock tasks for jet booking on the agenda? By the way, drinking beer is good. 
Joe, drinking beer is always good. Um, Jed Booking, not so much so because my agreement with Crocoblock was always to create content around the uh, sort of dynamic content, Jet Engine, you know, Jet Smart Filters, Jet Search, and so on. That's my strength. That's that's what I'm interested in. Things like Jet Booking and so on. I created one video, and it's a great plugin. I know you can link it through to dynamic content, and maybe I'll take a look at doing some kind of front end form link through to you know, a, a book inside of things. But at this point in time, I don't really have any plans to to dig into jet booking in any real depth, to be honest. Like I say, unless they come back to me and say they want me to create content on a specific purpose to do with that. But no real plans at the moment. So sorry I'm to say, but um, not really. Uh, what else do we have? Charlie Bird, it's always a real video stream when your host is drinking. Happy days. Well, you know, at the end of the day, we're all adults, and I think we should have a... We should relax, have a little bit of downtime, have a couple of beers. I don't think it's it's going to hurt. It's always good. Okay. Batags, in-house SEO manager, making a sweet living. That's good to hear. That really is good to hear. I mean, you know, it has been a tough time for a lot of people out there, a lot of industries. I know for me, where I, I live, it's not a particularly big place. And when we went into lockdown, which we are back in lockdown in, in, in my county again as well, um, when we went into lockdown, it basically, my web design business flatlined straight away. Overnight, that disappeared. So that's the reason why I kind of hopped into YouTube doing, at the time, five videos a week. And now I sort of hover between three and five a week because I thought, well, I'm going to double down on YouTube. I'm going to double down on all the things I can do with that and focus on helping people up their skill set, learn new skills, hopefully make new opportunities for themselves to make some money and all those kinds of things. So that's what I did. And this is the kind of point I was trying to make about how it's great that you can pivot so quickly when you are a freelancer, when you, you're in charge of your own destiny. That's what I did. I pivoted from my web design business to focusing on YouTube pretty much full time. That just meant that I'd be able to create more content, look at more opportunities. And now my sort of like my web design business is starting to come back up to where it was but in all honesty, I'm happy with that being 20% of my work and YouTube taking 80% of my work. This is where my passion is. So that's that's the way I'm looking. But great to hear about Ags. And I'm sure I'm going to say that about Bat Ags, that you are doing well. It's really good to hear. Rob, freelance and working hard. Absolutely awesome. Rob, I love hearing those kinds of stories. It's amazing to know that there are people out there that are grasping opportunities, working your, your butt off to create a business moving forward. And when things come out the other side and people's businesses start to pick up, people like you are going to benefit from it because you are making a business and making a name for yourself in a tough time. And when things get better, you'll reap the rewards. So good, man. Okay, uh, what else do we have? I started just a few months ago creating websites and now I'm creating my digital agency doing websites, social media management, and e-commerce consultancy. That's Vladimir. Absolutely awesome. Really good to hear. Like I say, I love hearing about people that are getting out there and grasping opportunities, taking the bull by the horns, making money for themselves, making a business, making a name for themselves. These are the things that that are amazing. You know, this is it's a tough time out there. And if you can do it in a tough time, believe me, when things get better, you can flourish, absolutely flourish. So wonderful. It's really, really good to hear. Uh, okay. Steve Pro, just starting out in this world of freelance. Well, I can only say good things, sir. I mean, all, all the best wishes in the world to help make this a reality for you. You know, as always, let me know how you're getting on with that journey. Any hurdles? If you come across something and you think, okay, I really don't know what to do with that. You know, it's difficult when you're doing things like you're juggling, not only building websites, but dealing with accounts, dealing with, um, accountants dealing with contracts dealing with you know sort of um proposals dealing with all those kinds of things as well as client management all those kinds of things that you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis those things are not easy when you're not used to them i mean i had to learn all of those things and it was daunting but i've been doing it for five years so that's really cool so steve if you ever get stuck on anything let me know if i can help out with any of those things or if i can create some content that'll help you out with your freelance business, let me know and I will be happy to help if I can, where I can. 
Michael Wright, re-beer. On my second old speckled hen since our 6 p.m. start. Old speckled hen. Ooh, that's hardcore. But thanks. I work in drug and alcohol treatment center in Florida, so we are super busy at the moment. I can imagine you probably are. Yeah. Okay. Miguel, I would love to ask you if I can modify the way my directory is working. I created the site that we started to upload the vendor's information by ourselves, but now we want the users to manage their listings. Take a look at my front-end user dashboard um, tutorial because that will give you a good idea of how you could create something that you could then let your users log in and manage their own contents, their own listings, and so on. It might take a little bit of modification, but the fundamentals are there. The tools are not particularly expensive, and you could create something like that probably in the best part of half a day and have everything tested up and running. So check out that one for the front-end dashboard for your clients, I think it's called. Just do a search for front-end dashboard, and my video comes up, one of the top videos, if not the top video on it. So check that out. Uh, why does lockdown kill web design? Surely it would promote, uh, prompt more people to move to online. To be honest, I think for me, I haven't really, since I moved into freelance, since I started doing more YouTube side of things, I've not really been too bothered about pushing my business. I work with, I think I've probably got something like about 70 clients, somewhere around that kind of figure. Um, and I still work with some of those clients. They have maintenance and ongoing sort of content contracts and things like that. So I just work with them, and I'm quite happy with that. And now YouTube and working with companies. I mean, I create white label content for different companies. I work with companies all over the world, to be honest, to do with creating content. Excuse me. This is gassy beer. So I kind of moved over to doing that side of things, whereas I suppose if I'd really been proactive and I contacted different clients, contacted different businesses, I probably could have drummed up more than enough business. I just didn't really... I didn't really have the incentive to do it because my passion was more for this and I didn't really need to go chasing that business, you know, when this all kind of hit. Um, you know, that's an enviable position that I put put myself in by spending, I think, the best part of six years now doing YouTube um, and just building relationships up, building, you know, contacts up, building my portfolio of videos up, creating content for other people and things like that. So... I think I've been been quite lucky. Uh, okay. Do you see yourself as a procrastinator? Hmm. Let me think about that. Uh, not really, no. I'm pretty much one of those people that if I see an opportunity and I get excited about it, which I do very, very easily, um, I, I'm a little bit OCD. I will hyper-focus on things and I will just keep on I get a blink of vision and I just get stuck into it. That's kind of what I'm like. So procrastinator, not much. No, I'm probably the opposite. I'm probably a little bit too gung-ho in most things. So I would say that's probably one of my uh, my traits. Um, okay, let's have a little look. Um, I am one of those who are entirely reliant on building sites and offering online marketing solutions for clients. Look, I will, I will say when it comes to working with clients, in any capacity, doesn't matter what you're doing, there's one thing that will always set you apart from the other ones that are out there, and that is offering an amazing service. It doesn't matter how good you are, how knowledgeable you are, as long as you provide a solution and as long as you are really, really helpful, you can set yourself apart from so many other businesses doing the same thing, freelancers, agencies, you know, whatever you want. It's about adding value to the clients about solving their problems by making their lives easier if you can set yourself up as being someone like that people will tell other people you know you've got someone that'll build a website anybody anybody can learn a tool like elementum and anybody can use templates and build sites it's not complicated you know some good some mediocre some terrible but the the, the tools are not as complicated as they used to be it's not about building the website. It's about building the confidence, building the relationship, supporting your client, your customer, whatever you want to call them, and giving them real sense of safety and the knowledge that they, they trust you. If you can build up trust in your ability, take my word for it, that is worth so much. I've got clients that 
they'll phone me up and they'll go, Paul, I want so and so, so and so. I go, Yeah, that's no problem at all. What kind of ideas have you got? I mean, like, oh, look, I trust you. You just get on with it. We know, we know that you'll do a good job. I got no, no, no qualms in that. Get on with it. Just tell me how much I owe you. That because they've got confidence in you, they trust you. There's no longer that call of going, Paul, how much is so and so going to cost me? Cost is the last thing they care about because they know. A, you're not going to rip them off because you've got they've got that trust in you. B, they know you've got the skills to do the job. And C, they just know that they want something. They've got a problem. You can provide a solution, and they just want you to do it. That's when you're in a good position. So try to build that relationship with your clients because that is going to be something that is worth way more than advertising, Facebook ads, and all those kinds of things to get work. You can have two or three clients that in a year or two can spread the word and you can have a lovely little client database that you work with on a regular basis. Hope that kind of helps anyway. Fat J, good to see you here. Uh, I posted a great new plugin I found in your group for making login pages, even email verification. Really great. Thank you very much. I'm almost looking for nice login options, and I've got something I want to look at in that. So that might even fit the bill. So I'll have a little look and let you know how I feel about that one. Michael Wright, I've been lucky that I have a client in New Zealand that's pretty much single-handedly kept me in work for the last few months it means pulling it all nighter sometimes though to match their time zone. And why why do you think that they are giving you that much work? I bet you it's because they trust you, which kind of just goes back to the point I was just making. When you have trust, you can have a very small handful of clients, and they can be the ones that will just give you all the money you need to move forward. It's just so important, really is important, cannot be underestimated by any stretch. <sighs> Joe, how old am I? Older than I'd like to admit to. And when did you start web things? When did I start web things? Uh, oh, bloody hell. That's going to show my age now, isn't it? Um, well, I started with, with Dreamweaver. It was probably where I first started with any real sense of... Um, interest, should we say, really sort of pushed forward with it. So if you can kind of figure when Dreamweaver was still part of Macromedia before it became part of the Adobe suite, that'll give you some idea. But I've been doing freelancing for four years. I had my business for 11 years prior to that, where I was a partner in a design business. And prior to that, I did three years in another company where I was a director. And I dabbled in web and I spent, <laughs> I spent 10 years prior to that teaching. And part of that was teaching digital photography, digital imaging, Photoshop, multimedia, uh, web design, building PCs, you name it, um, I was teaching it. So that'll give you some idea of how old I am and the gray hair on both sides of my head might give some indication too. Um, yeah, so hopefully, Joe, that'll answer at least part of your question. Eric, thanks for the answer. My pleasure. <laughs> Dirk DV, and now the most important question, what is your favorite artist stroke band? I can't say I've got one particular favorite artist or band. That's, that's the thing. I just love music. I mean, I've been a guitarist since I was about 14, um, written music, recorded music. If anybody knows, knows me, they might recognize my voice from my, one of my other channels, which I was doing up until about three years ago, which was called Reaper TV, which is all about audio production. Um, so to name a couple of bands that I like, I mean, Pantera is probably one of my favorite bands ever. Metallica, early Metallica. But bands like um, Judas Priest, you know, I grew up with Judas Priest. That was where I kind of started learning my guitar side of things. I don't know. I, I, love, I love all live music. I mean, that's one of the things that I found the hardest now going into to this lockdown is the lack of live music. I just... I, I'm used to being out gigging once or twice a week. I'm used to being out watching bands go into different parts of the country to go and watch gigs in little smelly venues right the way up to big venues and things. All those things are really, really, really the hardest part of this whole lockdown. So I don't have a particular favorite band. I have lots of bands I like. I love guitar-based music. I mean, I love bands, I love instrumentals. Like um, if you've never heard of him, Pliny, that's P-L-I-N-I, -I, check him out. There's David Maxim Machik, who's another amazing guitarist. I actually love his music. Um, I just love music. I just really do. Um, mostly rock music, but, you know, I just love music. I think it's amazing. Okay. 
Uh, what else do we have? We're going to have a couple more questions and then we're going to wrap it up. Mark Crowell, thank you very much for your super chat. Thank you for all your useful videos. Your videos have saved me my butt many times. Good to hear your butt is all safe. Thank you very much, though, for your super chat, Mark. That's much appreciated. Okay, we'll do two more questions and then we're going to we're going to wrap it up because, like I say, it's we've this one hour live stream is now nearly two hours long, so we've done our usual running over. Uh, okay, Joe, thanks, Paul. I like Macromedia a lot as a company and their software as well. Very intuitive, especially in these days. So guess it all as well. Looks like we're both old. The, the thing is, the nice thing is, if I go back to Macromedia, uh, I had a good relationship with the company, and they used to send me when I was. I used to do a website. Okay, let me let me just go back. Let me start this fresh. I've been doing online video training for a long time before YouTube existed. Well, before YouTube existed, and I used to create content for a channel that or for a website that I had, which was called WZ2K. Um, that was get that used to get about 1.4, 1.5 million views a month on it, and I did. If, if you know, if in the UK, I'm probably the US. There was magazines like .NET Magazine, Computer Arts Magazine, and stuff like that. I did cover CDs for them with training tutorials and things on covering things like Dreamweaver and Photoshop and stuff like that. So I had a good working relationship with Macromedia. So they used to send me whenever they released software, I'd get the entire Macromedia suite. Um, what are called NFR, which is not for resale, which basically means that you get the full product, but you can't use it commercially and you can't sell it or do anything like that with it. But I used to get all those kinds of things years ago for free. So I used to love all that side of things. It was great working with the magazines, working with creating those content, working with creating video tutorials and put up on my own site. So Macromedia was one of those things that was close to my heart. I was actually gutted when Adobe bought it because they just killed off so much of it. Um, so it's just like... Yeah, I've been doing this a long time. A long, long time. Okay. Revelation time. Recently discovered Nightwish. Els, I like early Nightwish. Early Nightwish is quite good. Um, not so much now. I'm not so, such a fan of that kind of theora theore oh God. theatrical vocals. <sighs> Two beers and I'm already done. Okay, Steve, remember Netscape Navigator? No, that was terrible. Dirk, yet yeah, my kind of guy, guitars, and yeah, I know I go live shows at least four to five times a month. Dirk, let's not talk about guitars because I have a bit of an addiction with guitars. I've got a lot. What site have you built that makes you really proud? Um, I don't know because it's one of those things that I kind of – I'm very much of the mindset of – I love them when I've done them, and I look back sometimes and I think I really like that site. And then I move on, I learn new skills, learn new techniques, things change, and I love the next site. But to kind of flip the question on its head, I've always found that when I'm designing anything, whether it's a site with promotion material, branding, logos, anything like that whatsoever, I'll design it and I'll spend time doing it. And you become out of focus, I get that sort of tunnel vision side of things with it. And I'll spend a bit of time doing it. And then I think you get too close to it. So what I tend to do then is I'll leave that alone. I'll go away and do something else, and I'll come back in a couple of days. And if I still have that passion for it, I know it's a good design. If I look at it and think, nah, I'm going to start again, it was never that strong. I just become too close to it. So while it doesn't say what was my favorite design or what's my current favorite, it gives you some idea of how I go about seeing if a design has legs before I actually spend more time on it. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Cheers, Paul. Loving your work. Thank you very much, Matt. Loving your, your, your comments. Uh, okay. I used to use Macromedia Cold Fusion a lot back in the day. Oh, Cold Fusion. That was a, that was a tough one. Um, .cf. Dreamweaver still exists. Imagine that. I know. When I've looked at it, it just doesn't feel the same. Just there's something. It's not. I think Adobe's just. They, they've taken it in the wrong direction. I think Macromedia were much better with it. Okay, so my OCD is going to say we've got six minutes to go, and we'll round this up to the eight o'clock mark, and then I'm going to go and have some food. So if you have any more questions for me, please do drop them into the live chat right now, and I will do my best to answer them. To go back, Miguel, yes, trust is king, and I absolutely agree, trust is king. Um, Miguel, you wanted to ask why your background is. Okay, if I quickly give you my background... Charlie Byrne drinking in sync with you. Top man. My background. Um, 
when I was 23, I was looking to set up my own publishing business because I had a passion for desktop publishing and design and those kinds of things. I went to an education center to get qualifications so I could get a grant to set up my own business. When I was there, I actually spent about three months there and several of the different tutors and things like that, seeing that I was helping a lot of different students out and asked me what I'd be interested in in training to become a tutor, at which point I jumped on the opportunity, trained, did 10 years running education centers, teaching, teaching, started off doing your teaching, your IT, you know, your word processing database, all those boring kind of office things, and then moved on to bringing Photoshop into the area, um, the whole macromedia suite. So I was teaching Flash, I was teaching Director, I was teaching multimedia, web design, building PCs, internet, all those kinds of things. Then moved on, set up my own business. Oh, sorry. Then moved on, become a director in a business that was a design business. I took in all the design side of things for the web design, graphic design, logo, brand, and all those kinds of things. Didn't get on with the one director there who was a bit of an ass. So myself and what became a business partner, we moved that business from there, took all the things that I was doing, all the things that he was doing, and we set up our own business. Excuse me. Did that for 11 years, then became a freelancer when I split from that business. We separated the business into two parts. He took his aspect. I took my side of things. And that's what I kind of do now alongside the YouTube, which I was kind of starting. I did about a, a year, 18 months of YouTube while still in that business and then concentrated on that a lot more when I become a freelancer. So that kind of gives you a look back to to my background and where I am now and where I actually came from. So hope that's maybe of interest to some people out there. It just goes to show that you can change career, you can move path. You can do what the bloody hell you want if you've got enough passion and drive for it. You can find opportunities to make money, to set up a business and build good long-term relationships with clients. Anyway, that's it. That leaves me with four minutes. I'm going to two more questions. And I said that about an hour ago. And then we are going to call it a day. Only good thing about lockdown, non-stop music at home and now learning guitar. Alan, I'm glad to see you've got a positive situation there. So that's brilliant. Charlie Bird, I would love to meet you one day. Well, maybe when all these um, this lockdown, all this kind of stuff actually gets out of the way and we can actually see people again, you know, as opposed to virtually via Zoom chat, maybe I'll take a look at setting up um, a meet somewhere. We can find if there's a group of people that are fairly local or we can find a centralized location in the UK and we can just have a meetup, have a couple of beers, talk about whatever, and just have a laugh. So I'm always up for doing that kind of thing. We'll have to see if we can sort something out in the future and have a meetup at some point. Oh, and Devon. I love Devon. Devon and Cornwall. I spent most of my childhood down in that area. So I love all that area. Weymouth and Dirtle Door and Lou, all those kinds of places. Lovely. Okay. I may have flight there too. Well, Miguel, you're more than happy. Charlie Bird, not far from Wales. No, about two or three hours in the car. Not too bad at all. Okay, so let's just wrap things up now. I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening, your day, whatever it is, wherever you are in the world, for joining me in this live chat, in this live stream. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you'll join me again in two weeks' time, same time, same place. If you haven't joined up to the Facebook group, again, wptats.co.uk forward slash Facebook. Join up there. Be notified when there's new content, when there's new live streams going. Bookmark next live stream. Become part of what we're doing around here. So I want to say thank you very much. I'm going to say good night to you and hope you're all safe and well and look after yourself in these really strange and troubling times. And anyway, for me, that's what I'm going to say. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs>